Hi everyone, welcome to Material Testing Laboratory of Department of Mechanical Engineering, Army Shore of Technology and Management, JP Nagar Bangalore. Myself, Dr. Durga Prasad Sri, working as a student professor in the Department of Mechanical Engineering, Army. So today we are here to demonstrate the laboratory experiments in a material testing lab. So as per the medium syllabus, the subject code is ABNBL 37 year. So in this material testing laboratory, we have a two set of experiments, that is part A and part B. In the part A, we have the experiments called hardness testing. So in the hardness testing, we uh, have a mineral hardness, wicker hardness and rockwell hardness. So, and also we have a microstructure evaluation. In a microstructure evaluation, you need to evaluate the microstructures of various engineering materials and also you need to perform the heat treatment process. And then coming to the non-destructive testing, in the non-destructive we have a magnetic particle testing, dye penetration testing and ultrasonic testing. So these experiments are nothing but individual experiments. The students should conduct this experiment individually. So coming to the part B, in the part B we have a group experiment. In a group experiments are nothing but we have a uh, tensor testing, compression testing, bending testing. See, these tests are conducted by using a uh, machine called universal testing machine and then also you have to conduct the impact testing. In the impact test, you have to conduct uh, Charpy and ISO test and coming to the VR test and fatigue test. So these are all the in group experiments, in it comes under the part B. Some of the general instructions for the students are First one is, before entering the laboratory, all the students should compulsively wear the apron and the shoes The second thing is, before entering the lab, the students should bring the practical record completed in all respects Third one is, before conducting the experiments, the student should take the permission from the concerned faculty or the technical staff Fourth one is, after the conduction of the experiments, the student should perform the calculations and draw the graph wherever necessary. And fifth one is, after completion of the experiments and the practical record, the student should take the signature from the concerned faculty. So today we are going to conduct a Brennan Ordnance testing. So why we need to conduct this testing? So in order to evaluate the hardness of the various engineering materials. So what is meant by hardness? Hardness is nothing but it is the ability of a material to resist deformation. So in order to evaluate the Brinell hardness, so we need to use the operating device called Brinell hardness tester. So coming to the construction of this Brinell hardness tester, it consists of various elements. You can see the first one is, this is an handle. Why this anvil is given to support the workpiece and you can observe here there is one more attachment is given. This attachment is mainly provided to hold the indenter and you can see the lever. The lever is given here. This lever is mainly given to apply load and also you can remove the load. And this is a, a controlling device or the controlling panel. You can see this is the power on and the power off. And compared to the, the rear portion, the back side portion of a Brinell hardness tester, so this attachment is mainly provided to apply the dead weights. Can you see here? So each pan is having a 250 kg force. So totally we have a 10 pans. So if you apply 10 pans so that we can achieve 3000 kg force. And one more thing, you can just compare to the front portion of a Brinell hardness. Can you see here the dial indicator? So this dial indicator, you know, so after performing a test, you can see the dial indicator here, the needle will move and the least count of this dial indicator is 0.01 mm.
The main aim of this experiment is to determine the Brinell hardness number of various ferrous and non-ferrous engineering materials. So in the ferrous materials we need to evaluate the BHN. BHN is nothing but Brinell hardness number of mild steel, cast iron. So coming to the non-ferrous material we need to evaluate the BHN of copper. The operators required for these experiments are Brinell hardness testing machine, ball indenters. So we have a 5 mm ball indenter, 10 mm ball indenter and coming to the specimens, testing specimens. So this is a copper specimen, aluminum specimen, brass specimen, mild steel and this is hardened steel specimen. And we have a one more equipment called Brinell hardness microscope. Now coming to the experimental setup, the first step is to select the material and the indenter required. So now I am considering a material called hardened steel. So on this material you can just observe that there are the values are mentioned on the material 10 bar 3000. What is meant by 10 and what is meant by 3000? 10 is nothing but the ball indenter size and 3000 is a kg force load need to be applied on the specimen. So this is a 10 mm ball indenter we need to fix in a indenter holding device. So now I am taking a 10 mm ball indenter. How to fix this ball indenter in a holding device? So like this you need to place a ball and then take this indenter. So this is a indenter holding device like this in a anti-clockwise direction you have to tighten the ball indenter rigidly. So once it is tightened you have to ensure that the ball indenter is rigidly fixed or not. So now the ball indenter is fixed. So after placing this indenter, so next step is you need to place the specimen, testing specimen on a hand wheel. So we have to ensure that the specimen should have a flat surface and also the surface of the specimen should be polished. Okay. So like this you have to place the specimen on the hand wheel exactly at the center place. After placing this specimen on the hand wheel, you have to slowly rotate the anvil clockwise direction and you need to observe that the anvil is moving upwards towards the direction of the indenter. So very slowly you have to rotate the anvil. So here after taking the specimen close to the indenter you have to ensure the specimen is contact with the indenter or not. So smoothly you have to take the specimen to the indenter just to make a contact between the specimen and the indenter. So now the specimen and the indenter is contact with each other. So after fixing up a specimen on the indenter, the next step is you need to apply the dead weights. So each pan having a 250 kg force. So our target is to achieve 3000 kg force. So like this one by one you have to apply the pan.
Also. And you can observe that the base pan, so this base pan and the rod carries 250 kg force and in build you have a 250 kg force. So totally we have achieved 3000 kg force. So after applying the dead weights, the next step is we have to, uh, you know, touch the specimen to the indenter. So you can carefully observe the in the dial gauge so in the dial gauge inside you have a smaller uh, needle this smaller needle should touches the the red point so that we have applied the inbuilt load of 250 kg force on the material so in order to apply this you have to gradually rotate the specimen in a clockwise direction so you can just carefully observe the needle is moving so now after applying the dead weights the next step is you have to slowly move the anvil so that the specimen should contact with the indenter and now you can just observe the dial gauge so inside the dial gauge you have a smaller needle should coincide with a zero point next step is you have to switch on the machine you can just observe the needles are moving in up, upward direction and now come back here slowly apply the, the remaining 250 kg force by rotating the specimen you can just observe the, the needle which is moving towards the red point so gradually you have to apply the load so now the smaller needle is exactly coincided with the red point so that what happened the inbuilt load is applied on the material next step is so by applying this lever you have to apply the load and wait for 15 seconds because we are conducting the experiment on the ferrous material so ferrous material exhibits higher hardness so that's why we have to maintain 15 seconds time and then release the load unlock it and take back the sample in the and secure the machine So this is your indentation. So now by using a choppies we have to mark this indentation and using a binal hardness microscope we have to measure the size of this indentation in order to find out the exact direction of this material. So now after the conduction of the experiment we have to evaluate the size of the indentation so for this we need to use the Brinell microscope so by using this Brinell microscope we have to find out the size of the indentation how to evaluate the size of this indentation just by placing a, this portable microscope on the indentation microscope now we are finding the size of the indentation that is diameter of the indentation so inside the microscope you can find the the scale which is given so by using this scale we can find out the the size of the indentation so now so after measuring the size of the indentation we come to know that so it is having 3.4 mm diameter so like this you have to perform the three trials and you have to evaluate the diameter of the indentation and you have to find out the average of this indentation so that is the bhn